Welcome to Tradespoon. My name is Lark Arpel. I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon. And today I'd like to go over current market conditions and our weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current, mar current market conditions, opportunities in the market, signals generated by artificial intelligence, our models, and then how I trade these signals. And then also look at the macroeconomic conditions, right? I am a top to bottom approach. I think the most important chart is interest rates right now not you know amazon or amd chart uh, but you know but you know i understand that most retail investors don't think like that but i hopefully i can change your mind slowly to appreciate that macro economic you know uh, data is important all right for those of you who are new welcome this is my brief bio my background is also a little bit different, is that I am a uh, you know, programmer basically by trade. So I was an executive in several startups here in Chicago. I worked with hedge funds, several broker dealers, the Option Express went public, Media Ocean got sold. Um, and then started Yellow Tunnel, Trade Spoon. Trade Spoon over I think, 12 years, the Yellow Tunnel maybe five years. Uh, I've been trading, I haven't updated the slide, I don't want to admit it, but I've been trading 25 years already. It's going to be 20, 25 years since I joined Options Express. A long time. Uh, and obviously mentoring, teaching, that's something I enjoy. So that's the difference, right? That we have a team of financial engineers building models, providing signals based on the latest advances in AI, which you could find other companies to do that, but then we also trade them in the live trading room. And that is very unique proposition, right? Usually you have market makers, you know, basically showing you what they do when they were market makers, uh, which Keith does, which is great, but they don't have, like even Keith background, Keith's background is mathematics. You know, I think he has master's or PhD in mathematics um, and he's an ex market maker. All right, disclosures are very important. Please read them. Trading does involve risk, not suitable for everyone. If this is the first time you've seen the slide, I would encourage you to pause it and visit optionscreen.com so you can understand the risk associated with trading stock or options. You can always pause the screen. All right, uh, trading, the goal for any trader is to become successful, right? How do you become successful? I think it requires discipline and repetition, right? You, uh, and that requires for you to internalize some of these concepts right that they become second nature to you just like any other profession you know i would treat trading as a pro as a profession or as a business right that requires time dedication processes documentation right Docu trading documentation is extremely important i encourage you to write down your trading plan and rules right and then keep a journal and before you place any trade you go through the checklist right the most important checklist for me is um, cash, keep 30%, on average, I would propose to keep 30% of your portfolio in cash, and risk management, portfolio drawdown, right, you look at the, how many positions you have versus, um, and what's the maximum um, uh, risk or drawdown per position, what are your stop levels? Innately, we don't think about negative, right? When you start trading, you don't think about stop losses because, you know, by default, the way our brain is wired, we only think about positive, right? We're pushing negative thoughts away, right? Uh, and in trading, that could lead to problems, right? Because if you think that NVIDIA is only going to, or Bitcoin only can go higher, that is a false assumption, right? NVIDIA and Bitcoin can have large drawdowns. And we've seen NVIDIA 30, 50% drawdown. We've seen Bitcoin 30, 50% drawdown. So when these drawdowns do happen, what is your exposure and how much money are you willing to risk? So you shouldn't, you know, the idea is to think about this before you place trade, not after, you know, Bitcoin drops 30, 40%. So that exercise is important. It's innately, it's not our nature to think like that. So you need to kind of rewire your brain, right? And that takes time, right? Especially, you know, I know as I get older, it's very hard for me to rewire my brain because, you know, I have my habits and it's hard to change them. But, you know, but I do believe in progress. I do believe it doesn't matter what your age is, you can change. I tell my wife that all the time. She doesn't believe me, but fine. But at least deep inside, I do believe that. 
So that takes time and that takes effort. And that's the most difficult thing to do from training psychology point of view. Also, I would be thinking about trading as you know, statistics, right? It's a distribution of possible outcomes. So every time I trade in my head, I have, you know, going back to your, you know, basic statistics class, if the stock is trading here, right? And this is your stock prices, right? And this is your probability, right? So this is the highest probability that it's, you know, it's gonna end up by end of today here. And then the further you go out, right you have one sigma two sigma moves the probability decreases right probability decreases that you know microsoft or amazon is going to move you know 10 percent today sometimes you can shift that probability right if there's earnings and uncertainty you think my, my amazon can hit a good earnings then you know then it's not what maybe two sigma maybe it's one sigma move right but still Every time you trade, you look at support and resistance and possible outcomes, right? And then we'll review some of the tools that can show you, well, how many people think like that, right? The idea is game theory. Game theory is important because it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what Bob thinks. It matters what majority of the people think, right? You can believe that we're gonna have a blue wave or a red wave, but what's the majority of the people think? That's what's important, right? So game theory is extremely important when it comes to trading. And you want to see the position. You want to see what other people think. Where, where are they placing their investments, right? And we talked about, you know, a good example today. Um, where's Amazon? 199. Okay, good. Well, not good. It needs to get above 200. Uh, but you look at the gamma exposure, right? And you look at Amazon. Right, so this is the chart. This is you can see this high bar. It's gamma, right? Gamma sounds scared or scary, right? It's like Halloween topic. Open interest. Think of it as open interest, right? Open interest means people are buying and selling a lot of contracts at that level prior to earnings, right? Prior to the stock being up 13 percent. So when you see that prior to the stock being 13% and you look at the standard deviation, right, expected move, one standard deviation was, you know, about 7 8%. And because they had positive earnings and, you know, AI is alive and their investment into infrastructure is justified, you know, their data center revenue is growing higher, that AWS is going higher their you know bi the ai tools is going higher they're getting rewarded for now just one standard deviation but it could be because that's where most of the people are have this is the highest level where people have their open interest right and outside of the 200 it's significantly less right so probability of success and selecting that strike price is the most difficult task and just keep in mind that you either can structure your, your trade where you have high probability of success based on this, you know, bell-shaped curve, uh, was it Gaussian, Gaussian distribution curve, uh, or you can have high return on capital. You cannot have high return on capital and high probability of success unless you have some kind of a advantage, right? Maybe you are high-frequency hedge funds that have, you know, direct connection to exchanges and you're trying to shave milliseconds right or microseconds for that matter then you have an edge okay then you can have high probability of success high return on capital but average retail investor if you want to like amazon trade right was an example from this morning live trading room uh you can structure your trade where you can invest you know using the uh, i think here right amazon right i for amazon This is uh, our elite service where you can see all the trades, right? You can enter a phone number, get an SMS message. I have a well-defined risk, 38 cents, right? But I'm trying to capture a trade for $2.40, assuming Amazon can move another 1% higher, right? And escape that gravity of the 200 strike, right? Because that 200 strike acts as a gravity because this is where high open positions are and dealers, have to force the stock as it goes 200, they force to sell. And that's why it goes 197, 200, 197, 200. At some point it can escape, 
but the time you know the clock is ticking going against me what is the trade maybe i should close if it's profitable let's see at least semi profitable right now it's breaking even 64 and change it to a dollar 40 cents away I mean, if you do see the scape 200 getting bigger i i would maybe change it back but for now 200 is the overhead resistance so this is an example kind of of these asymmetrical returns right asymmetrical returns where you can invest 68 cents you know you cannot lose more than 68 cents right this is a butterfly profit and loss And butterfly, it's nothing more than just two spreads. Right, one is the bullish spread, uh, yeah. and one is the bearish spread. Right, so long butterfly. If it's right now, I'm at 200. So if it expires at 200 by end of the day, then I'm, I lost 64 cents. If it if it escapes 200 and gravitates to two or two and a half or two or five. Well, then at 205, I'm actually can make five dollars, right? But as long as I, I realize that this is only going to happen, you know, one standard deviation, right? You know, maybe 30% of the time it can get to the to that level, right? But not more, right? So I would maybe look at the barbell approach to investing, because the most common mistake is that a lot of people basically will tell you that oh we can do this triple digit returns you're not supposed to say that you know you're supposed to disclose that they happen rarely right they do and it's true they do happen rarely right based on statistics but you can dedicate it you know small percentage of your portfolio to these trades because they're they sound great right they sound great it's promising it's exciting but you know i wouldn't put all my portfolio into this trades right i would maybe put five ten fifteen percent of my portfolio into these trades and if they work it, it, it's great you know more often than not they don't uh, but then you can concentrate on the high probability of success trades then you can concentrate on high probability of success trade you're not going to double or triple your money overnight but you know this is where compounding investment makes sense right over time you're investing money and if, as long as you, you know, can get 20% a year, 30% a year, then you're better than most of the managers, right? And you know, you always can raise bar higher, right? Quarter over quarter, treat your, you know, trading as business and set goals, right? Weekly goals, quarter over quarter, year over year, and continue raising slowly, raising the bar, right? slowly raising the bar because there is a disconnect, right, between what we want and what the reality is, right? Usually. There's a term, I forgot what it is, but this is kind of what I want, right? And this is the reality. So at some point, as we get older and more experience, not older, but more experience, you know, you want to slowly shift this and meet somewhere, right? Because you start trading, I want, you know, I only live once. You know, we've seen, you know, these, the dumb money movie, right? The, GameStop movie, it's all exciting, and people you know can make the money, but then at some point you realize that you know your performance is somewhere in the middle. All right. Uh wait two to three days to confirm trend change, right? So some of the other items on my trading plan, you know. Market pull back one day. One day is not enough to say, well, the the you know, the market, the trend is broken. Right, just because we sold off. Oh, actually, we did make new high. 2050. All right, let's go. Amazon, I'm cheering for you. I know you can do it. Okay. Anyway, um, it is at all time high, so it's hard to break all time high. But we did make new incremental highs. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Easily get distracted. Um, see, I'm getting old. I lose my track of thought, thoughts very easily. Uh, 
What did I say the last thing? Oh, thank you, Dill. Appreciate it. Okay. So, yeah, so I'm still watching Amazon. All right. Um, any questions so far? I know I talk a lot, but okay. Let's see. They want to, all right. So, two to three days, oh, two to three days to confirm the trend change. Hello? Two to three days to confirm the trend change. Uh, and spiders did pull back, right? Spiders did pull back. But the one day is not enough. Two days, if we have continuation, and especially if we break 565, then I would say, yes, trend has changed, right? But you need data, you need time, right? We have elections next week. And if after elections, we're going to drop below 565, then I would say, at least short term, the trend is broken, right? And now we're in downtrend, right? But until then, you need time, right? You need time. Uh, number of positions, right? Risk management is important, right? Be long and short the market at the same time. Most people are bullish, but we believe in Christmas rally. You know that uh, you know Amazon hit a home run and Intel hit a home run, and Fed will lower interest rates next week. So the consensus is soft landing, buy and pullbacks. But in any bull market, pullbacks could be five, ten percent, fifteen percent, right? You just don't know, right? You just don't know. With the elections, it could be delayed. It could be social unrest. I mean, all these possible outcomes. They have low probability. Most of the time, it's orderly and everything will be fine. But sometimes it's not. And at that time, being short the market, at least have one of the out of these four positions short, or do spreads, option spreads, or do cover calls. Right? Protect your stock position with short call, or protect your stock position with long put. That gives you that. Where you mark you you long and short the market at the same time, you can be overall bullish based on your portfolio delta. You can be overall bullish or you can be bearish, but you know you have both positions. And obviously, a lot of this training psychology is like how do we rewire our ourselves? First step is obviously you know emotional intelligence, right? You have to be self-aware, right? So thinking. fast and slow right great book i highly recommend daniel kane and he's considered to be modern like emotional intelligence and he has actually got nobel prize right he's founder of emotional intelligence this field has been right you know very popular in the past I don't know, few decades um so realizing that we are thinking in two modes right the fast our innate decision market is down we want to sell Market is up, we want to buy, right? Fear of missing out, fear of future regret. We make fast decisions, right? Knee-jerk reactions. And you know, and that war, and that's how we survived as species, right? When you have a lion, you know, running after you, you can't really spend too much time thinking about, you know, whether you should run or confront them. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we have our primal wires in our brain, right? Amygdala. But then you have frontal cortex that more analytical slow process so for trading it's the same thing you can make decision always in your fast mode sometimes you have to switch to a slow mode right and you want to make decision right you want to be warren buffett right warren buffett is not known to make fast decisions right uh, so slow sometimes slow and steady is better right so the great book you know self-awareness is the first step in this process but if you want to be a better trader, you haven't read books like that, where it talks about emotional intelligence, you know, thinking in small bats, right? Another book I really like. Thinking in bats. Any Duke, right? I mean, she's a poker player, but same thing. Probabilities, emotions, and how do you you know invest you know in these small increments right so really good book also something that i would highly recommend to read if you want to get better in trading right those are the two books that i think 
influenced my training a lot. I mean, there's a lot of other books, but you know, the, at least those are my. This is where I would start. Um, all right. So, how do we help a trade spoon? I've been talking for 24 minutes. We have different services. So we have models, right? We build our own AI models. This is a stock for a toolbox main model. Basically shows for the next 10 days, it's been negative, right? It's been negative, despite market going higher. It's fluctuating between negative and neutral because market is overbought. Price resolve itself through time, right? You need time to resolve the trends. So it, it, that's what it's doing right now. And I think after elections, you're going to have a big, big move. The, the price will resolve itself. If you believe in seasonality, right? We have seasonality tools. That's one of the arguments. You don't trade based on seasonality, but you know that this is one of the components of the decision-making process, right? That slow decision-making process. Usually, you know, from seasonality point of view, November, December, you do have a rally, Christmas rally. It doesn't happen. We've seen 10% drawdowns in December uh, several times in the past decade or so. It does happen, but usually you need a catalyst. Like Powell comes out and say, listen, we're not going to cut interest rates. He says something like that, or we're going to cut it more aggressively, 50 basis points. That will, you know, negate the seasonality and, you know, will move the prices, right? But if he doesn't say anything out of ordinary, if elections is not, you know, if, you know, we have Trump president and, you know, Senate is controlled by Democrats or vice versa, right? Harris controls, Harris is a president and House is or Senate is controlled by Republicans, you know, then it's a status quo and market likes status quo, it likes certainty and then we go higher, right? We go higher. Uh, so those are the tools, stock for Kiev's toolbox, if you uh, basically shows for the next 10 days, 580, right? It basically says we can revisit the all time high 580. On the downside, we could be at 560. I agree with the model. You know, if we break through the today's low, yesterday's low, we could quickly drop to 560 or even 550. On the upside, if you look at the gamma exposure, let's go Amazon. We're getting close. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What's the spread trading? It? Oh, still 68 cents, but okay. Um, if you look at the spiders in terms of overhead resistance and support, an expected move, right? You, so I'm looking at, again, gamma exposure. I'm not gonna do it weekly. We're gonna do monthly, right? November 15 and 12, 20. So again, this one standard deviation move, right? I'm looking at the expected move is around 3%. We could be at 600 by the end of the year or two standard deviation at 610, right? If everything lines up properly, soft landing, you know, mixed uh, balance of powers in the government, and you know earnings are well earnings is unknown is gone right that lowers interest rates then we're at 600 610 right uh you know obviously if there's negative surprise there's really not much hedging outside of 600 560 you know we could drop to 550 rather quickly if the 560 level doesn't hold now right we broke to the 570 which is first punch if we drop below 560 we could quickly move that you know, three, five percent to the downside, right? So positioning is important, you know, the overall gamma is important, right? You, there's not a lot of gamma, you know, only if, well, now it's, it was four billion, now it's five and a half billion, but it expires right after the elections and December, nobody's hedging, right? It's less than two million. Uh, two billion, less than two billion overall gamma in December. So very small positioning. You know, so November 15, you know, you're going to have a interesting expiration after the elections. So those are the, some of the tools. You can always zoom out, right? This is analyzing 10 days. Now you're analyzing six months. And sometimes people say, Vlad, you know, one model says up, another says down. You have conflicting data. Well, not really. 
because you analyze in different time intervals, right? So one model can analyze short term, another model could be analyzed long term. Usually you want them to be aligned. You want short term momentum to be up. You want long term momentum to be up. But you know it changes. So this is November. We and you could see the the momentum is deteriorating. So the long term trend was you know 10 percent, 15 percent, then it was seven, six. Now in November it's only two percent. So it's still small. But it's basically becoming neutral, right? The two-year bullish momentum is deteriorating. It is deteriorating. That doesn't mean it cannot go to 614 and 620, right? But it is deteriorating and it's getting weaker and weaker every month, right? So I'm, that is the number I'm watching, right? Because this is a momentum behind the bull market long term, right? Uh, still positive, but getting weaker and weaker every month. Something to keep in mind, especially even assuming that we will have a Christmas rally, January, February, March could get very interesting, right? Especially, you know, with the new government. Uh, so that's the stock forecast toolbox. We talked about seasonality chart, right? Same thing, we have probability calculator, right? Similar to gamma exposure, basically shows spiders next 50 days it's actually narrow 580 by 556 it's things um that's one standard deviation obviously you know if you're getting closer to two standard deviation it could be much higher but we do have probability calculator seasonal chart what i trade in the live trading room is active trader right you can actually see today i don't think there's any bullish signals right usually if there's no bullish signals then it's a pause right it's a pause because model has not fine I think we're doing more than S&P 500. I think we're close to 800 stocks we're analyzing every day and no bullish signals. A lot of bearish signals, right? A lot of bearish signals. If you click on bearish, Broadcom is bearish, TJX is bear bearish, you know, Dollar General is bearish. So, and there were others. So, you especially Broadcom, when you see Broadcom, then it's a sign of concern. But these are short-term signals, right? If you want a short Broadcom, right? You can you know, look at the chart. If you agree with the model, the chart looks weak, drop below 50-day moving average, you know, then it gives you basically suggestions, right? You can short if it reaches 174.33 or 176.62, right? So if you did 176.62, right? Then you zoom out, you do five-minute interval, right? When it was, uh, when is it? Yeah, in the morning, right? Friday. So let's see, Thursday, Friday. Right. So when it reaches 170.62, you're short, right? If you did that, then you would be up 80 cents right now. Right? So that's how you would use it. Sometimes it doesn't reach that level, then people start asking, well, well what if it's 170.50? What if it's 170.35? then you really don't have a trading plan the idea of this is to provide you signals with suggested levels <clears throat> but if you're still not sure what to do then i would encourage you to join the lead circle this is where i actually trade these signals right and you can be in the live trading room you can see how i trade them and then you can make a decision right and then you can you know kind of decide any questions on elites so elite circle you can see all of my orders position i tried to do combination of stock and option trades since we have different traders. So this is Amazon, right? We talked about Amazon trade, try to close it at a dollar. Um, I'm trying to close Exxon Mobil's half of the position. I added to Bank of New York. So you have a mixture of both spreads, options, option spreads and stocks. So I'm trying to give more kind of different ideas for different type of traders. Some of these are short term trades, right? Amazon was overnight. Some of these are longer term trades, right? That I hold position for a few days, few weeks, sometimes a few months. So um, that's the lead circle, right? So you have a lead circle, you have uh, active trader where I generate these signals. You have weekly trader. A lot of people, you know, they're busy, they have full time job, they're taking care of their loved ones, they don't have time to watch the trades. Then you have weekly trader. It gets published every week. You have Philip Morris. It pays you a dividend, model says bullish. Maybe you want to hold this for a few weeks, maybe you want to hold it for a few months. Okay, you buy Philip Morris, right? If you agree with the model, you agree with the momentum, you, you like the dividend, okay, then you buy Philip Morris. 
right? Same thing. If you're not sure, you know, if the suggested price was 129.72 on Monday, right? Monday. Well, actually, it did reach 129. So if you bought at 129.72, okay, great. It worked out. This, uh, you know, you're up two dollars. Um, let's say it did not. It gapped up, right? It gapped up, and you missed it. And then the question, then usually we open up support. You said, Vlad, I missed it. Should I still be in it? My answer is, I can't tell you what to do, but I can invite you to Elite Circle, and you can watch how I trade, and then you can make a decision, right? You can ask questions, I can answer it, but there is no yes or no. This is all depends on how much experience you have, how much money you manage, and what's your risk tolerance level. Do you have four positions or do you have eight positions? Is your drawdown two and a half percent or five and a half percent? You know, all of these are factors into decision making process, and you can't just have simple yes or no answer. Uh, weekly trader, monthly trader, same idea. If you want to follow my trades, Elite Circle, you get access to all the tools, picks, and platform, you know, portfolio. If you don't have time to, this is overwhelming, I get it. Premium portfolio is only once a week, you get one spread idea, right? And then you're done. Um, Shadow Trader is only access to live trading room and my trades. If you don't care about picks and tools, you just want somebody to tell you what to buy, great, then you can do Shadow Trader. Um, and then we have a lot of free content, right? education right trading is education you need to invest time into education there's a lot of uh, newsletters published right on friday thursday monday we publish newsletters videos uh getting started guide um and you know learning center right there's a workshop recordings there is a different you want to learn about technical analysis options basics we have lessons on all of these topics i encourage you to learn obviously it's always better to have a coach right we do have a coaching program that i encourage you to consider it's a time commitment it's financial commitment but you know if you want to be a better, better tennis player or if you want to be a better you know piano player or chess player yeah you can do it yourself but you're going to hit the ceiling right if you want to overcome the ceiling i encourage you one-on-one -on -one coaching it does require time it requires money not everybody has luxury of time and money i get it but if you do, then consider one-on-one -on -one coaching. All right, anything else? Carvana, does it really react? I mean, Carvana is, you know, one day they go bankrupt and one day they're, you know, hitting a home run. Obviously, you know, right now they're hitting a home run, right? We were talking about bankruptcy. You know, in 23, but they raise money. People are buying cars, and you know, you you, you do. It doesn't matter what you think, right? You shouldn't be trading what you're thinking. You should be trading on what the chart shows you. And obviously, the chart shows you elevator up, elevator down, elevator up. I assume at some point it's going to be elevator down, but obviously that is no longer an issue. People are buying cars, and there are a lot of stories like that. It's best be prepared to quit your partner after you know. tiny print. <laughs> Interesting, Ian. Thank you. I mean, I, I enjoyed the book, but you know, could, obviously there could be a different uh, CV and A. Okay, thank you, Bill. Yeah, Ian, I'm bullish Netflix. This is one of my positions. It had good earnings. Obviously, chart looks good. All time high, breakout above 700. If if the Grinch is not going to steal the Christmas then I assume Netflix is going to go higher. Robert, thank you. Now Caravan looks funny in toolbox. Stock for his toolbox. When you have volatile stock like that, like model sometimes just shows you funny stuff, 40% up. I think there was a split within the process split. Oh no, this is earnings. Sorry, this is earnings. Um, yeah, I mean, Obviously, it's it gapped up. I mean, it went what twenty percent. What's this move? 
in short period. I mean, it went up 30%, right? In two days, so model basically says, well, it can go up another 40%, right? And it's actually stuck, yeah. So this is usually, when you have very high volatility move, model just, you know, right. I, I wouldn't assume that Carvana can move another 40%, but yeah. Thank you for letting me know. I think once it stabilizes, the model will adjust to this big gap. All right, any other questions? All right, if there are no other questions, then you guys are awesome. Thank you very much for participating and um, I will see you Monday. Enjoy your weekend, you know, energize, you know, Training requires energy, mental energy, physical energy. So recharge, regroup, and Monday, hopefully to see everybody in the live training room. Thank you very much and have a great day.